We're finished chapter two, we're into chapter three. And first thing is derivatives. Uh, and derivative will give you the slope of a tangent line at a point. So we haven't uh, explicitly looked at derivatives, but we've looked at all the components of derivatives so far. So if you have some function, and I'll draw some curved function here, and two x values, We'll call this one x naught, and it's going to be x with uh, h is the measurement of how far over we go. And on the graph, there is two uh, points on there, and I want to look at the slope of the secant line going through here. And how do we get the slope? It will be f of x naught minus f of x divided by x naught minus x. So that's all things we did before. Tangent, also known as rate, or not tangent, secant line, also known as rate of change. This is how uh, chapter two began with rate of change. And all I'm gonna do is take out x naught and replace it by x plus h. And simplify that, the x cancels the minus x in the denominator. There's our slope. Now what I want to do is get a more accurate slope at x. So if we zoom in really far, the slope looks like it's pretty close to being flat. So I'm gonna estimate the actual slope of the curve, not between x and x naught, but right at x. And it looks like it's going to be something like this right here. So how can we take what we know, which is the slope between two points, and turn that into the slope at one point? Uh, the answer to that is we're going to take this second point right here, and we're going to move it over towards x. So that point, we want to think of it as x plus h, where h is the measurement between x and x naught. So what I need to do is take h, and I need to shrink h. Shrink h, how far? Oh, to zero. So this sounds like a really good time to use a limit. So we're gonna take h and shrink it to zero or take a limit as h approaches zero. So our difference quotient the actual slope of y equals f of x at x is lim h approaches zero of the difference quotient, what we just wrote down. Now I need to give this a math name. I can't write down the actual slope of y equals f of x at x is, and the math name we give for that is f, and there's a new symbol, we call it prime, and it looks a whole lot like a first power, but it's actually a prime. And I made it a little extra bold. I'll make it a little extra, extra bold. So that little symbol right there is called prime, and it means derivative. And this is the definition of derivative.
So this is the definition of the derivative of f at x. And it's of course written as f prime of x. The good news is, uh, we don't need this. The good news is, <coughs> we've done all this before. We just didn't have the names for it. So you've done difference quotients and taken limits. And of course, when you take the limit of these, the whole goal, this is the bad H right here. That's the bad guy. You have to use algebra, get rid of it. And then you can take your limit. So we saw all the strategies we need for this. And we're just gonna go ahead and do some examples right now. We're going to find f prime of x, f prime of 1, and f prime of 2 when, <clears throat> well, let's start with the square root function. All right, so what we're going to do, I recommend find f prime of x, and then just plug in 1 and 2 afterwards. That'll be the fastest way to do this in general. So writing down, what is f prime of x? I don't know, except I do know the definition. So it's lim h approaches zero. What part of this is the most difficult? Do not mess this part up. The most common mistake I see is that, which is, you say it the same way, that is f of x plus h, but the f of x plus h, that's f of x plus h. So do not write f of x with a plus h outside. Ooh, how do we do this? There are three tricks. Uh, I'll write them down right now. So these are algebra tricks. Uh, multiply by conjugate over conjugate. First trick, second trick, factor, and then cancel. And third trick is expand. You get this uh, in the x squared function or x cubed function, any, really any polynomial. You can expand, uh, sometimes we call it foiling. If it is degree two, expand, foil, then combine like terms. And the fourth one, add fractions. And of course you need common denominator. I'll just write L, C, D, least common denominator. Uh, generally the least common denominator is not gonna be least, it'll be the product of the two, but you've had to do those problems before. So those are all the four algebra tricks we need. Obviously this one, there's no factoring, canceling, there's no expanding, and there's no fractions. Uh, so we're going to multiply by conjugate over conjugate. You don't need to multiply uh, the part that is not conjugate, which is the denominator does not need to be expanded or, or distributed across. Numerator needs to be because that's the whole reason we're doing this. And we have conjugates multiplying very easily. X plus H square root times X plus H square root is just the square roots cancel and you get just X plus H. Uh, square root X times square root X is regular X and it's negative. 
Now conjugates, why are they really nice? Just do a really fast review. Because your middle terms are your inside outside, so your middle and outside terms cancel. And you just get first term squared minus second term squared. So that's why multiply by conjugates is great. And also factoring, uh, sometimes you need to look at conjugates to factor. And we get x minus x. These x's are going to cancel out right here. And we're just going to be left with an h. And h is cancel, not to zero, but to one. So we get one over square root x plus h minus square root x. Now if you noticed, I keep writing lim, 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 lim. It's a lot of limbs to write, but remember I haven't done anything other than algebra so far. So I have not actually applied the limit yet. We did just cancel out the bad h. Once that bad H is gone, you can take your limit. Oop. I was a little worried for a second. That was going to be zero, but there should be a plus. So we get one over, we got one of these plus another one of these, one over two squared X. This is what we started with, F prime of X. So we got that. That is f prime of x, so that's part of our answer. And I also asked for f prime of one and f prime of two. So this is very easy to do once you know this, f prime of one, all I do is look, oh, there's an x, I'm gonna put a one there. So there's f prime of one is one half. And do the exact same thing with two. And unfortunately that doesn't simplify at all. And that's just whatever number that is. You can put in a calculator if you want. Uh, it's smaller than a half, bigger than zero, somewhere in between. So what does this all look like? This is a bunch of um, algebra and a little calculus that we did. We started with the squared x function. Zero, zero, one, one, four, two. So I'm sketching out our original graph right here. F prime of one. Okay, one, there's x equals one. So what I did first, I was F prime of one. This, if I scroll back to the top, this was the slope of F. of f at x equals one. So that's exactly what I defined the, what the derivative meant. Just run back up here. The actual slope of y equals f of x at x is, and we did all that work. So we're looking at one. The actual slope is one half. Uh, I'm going to draw the actual tangent line now using that slope. So here is our one half y value. So actual line will be one half x, slope one half, plus one half. And how did I get that? Uh, I just used, uh, I just visually measured it out and said, all right, I need to go through this point, obviously. And my slope's one half. So I went one to the left and then down one half. Or you can go one to the right and up a half. Uh, or you can, of course, use algebra. And one of the better algebra formulas y minus y naught equals m 
x minus x naught, and the other one, y equals mx plus b. I'm not going to go through the details. All of you have done this before, hundreds of times, maybe thousands, and you get your y-intercepts, et cetera, et cetera. I could do the same thing at 2, but the slope's ugly. I'd have to actually figure out the y-intercept. I could certainly do a quick sketch of that. It's going to look something like this right here, and you'd get whatever. I don't really want to draw the y-intercept. I don't know if it's bigger or smaller than 1. I'd have to do some actual work to figure out the y-intercept, which I don't want to do uh, because I want to get on to the next problem. So there's the sketch of the tangent line at 2. Let me erase all that. That looks kind of ugly. I just want to have one tangent line on the graph. Okay. If you try to get the slope at zero, uh, what you would get is undefined, which would mean at zero, if I zoom in, this is not the best graph of the square root function, but there's actually a vertical slope at zero. So I did not draw the best graph. Probably should be curved a bit more like that is how the square root curve actually looks. So it does get vertical right there at zero. So we did f prime of x, 1 and 2. We're going to do the exact same problem with a different function. now. One of the hardest parts of this is writing down f of x plus h correctly. If you know what you're doing, it's very easy. If you don't know what you're doing, it's impossible. It's just one of those things you either, there is no try, there's only two. So you either do it right or you don't do it right. So there's our difference quotient. Oh no, fractions of fractions. Easy way to fix that uh, is write h is one over h multiplication. Uh, what I don't want to do is write lim, 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 lim a whole lot. So instead, over here on the right side, I'm going to do all my algebra. So this is my algebra zone. You don't have to label it like this, uh, but if I see space in between your calculus on the left, algebra on the right, I will understand. Okay, so we'll start here. Now, there is no common denominator. I'm not going to worry about this 1 over h until the pretty much the last step. So we're going to be working entirely on the uh, inside these parentheses here. Whoa, that's illegal. There we go. That's fine. Better multiply it by 1, not 1 over x. Oh, that would be really bad. And we got our original 1 over x times x plus h over x plus h. It looks ugly for a minute. It will look better very soon. So we're going to get x minus x plus h over x times x plus h. Now I am going a little more quickly than normal because uh, the only other person here is my dog and he's not asking me very many questions. So we're just gonna keep going. So if there are questions, I uh, recommend somebody can run up and pause it. Uh, and I'm trying to make this uh, way shorter than the class period. So you have the opportunity to do that. 
Uh, we basically get x minus 1 times x plus h. x minus x is 0, and we're left with a just minus h over x times x plus h. 1 over h. Now you want to be careful that h's cancel, but they really cancel to 1. So a very good way to cancel these out is write a 1 in their place like this. So cross them out vertically, and you're remembering, oh, oh yeah, that's a negative 1, not a regular positive 1. It also doesn't cancel out to nothing, it cancels out to negative 1. All right, so there we go. Done with our algebra. We're ready to take this back over to the left side. Hopefully we've done, I think we've done almost this exact problem before. The bad H is gone. We lost it right here when I drew the one through it. And we're ready to plug in our zero for H because we're no longer dividing by zero. Of course, x plus 0 is x. However you want to write this fraction is fine. This is f, that's a bad prime, f prime of x. All right, so word on notation. What you don't want to do is if you ever have something to the first power, you should never write first powers anymore because every time you see what looks like a first power should always be a derivative or a prime. So do not write any more uh, first powers. Squares and cubes are a different story. You should always write those, but if you have something to the first power, I strongly recommend you don't write their first power next to it because from now on, that's gonna make you think derivative. It'll certainly make me think derivative when I grade your work. So here, I only wrote limit twice I didn't have to write lim, 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 lim because I did my algebra on the right in the algebra zone and all my calculus was done on the left in the calculus zone. So there's f prime of x, f prime 1, and f prime of 2. So these are slopes at certain x values. We graphed the 1 over x function before. I'm just going to graph the uh, positive x values. There is a whole other part of this function. I'm not really curious at the moment what happens when x is 0 or when x approaches infinity. What I want to look at, so there's 1, 1. There's plenty of times that I'm going to ask you what happens when x gets close to zero, what happens when x goes uh, towards infinity. But right now, I want to look at what is, uh, let's see, f prime of, let's do f prime of 2. How about that? We did one last time. So we'll look at 2. Oh, that was a major mistake. Good thing I caught it. All right, the reason I caught the mistake is because I looked at the graph. So this is what I call the math spidey sense. I looked at this graph and I thought about what would the tangent look like? Tangent would look like this. It looks like the slope should be right about negative one. According to my calculations, then it should be negative one half. Those don't match up. So something is wrong. Uh, unfortunately, your spidey sense is probably not quite as uh, developed as mine is because I've been, been doing math since the last millennium. And uh, I've made a lot of mistakes, so I know what they smell like by now. So let's figure out what we did wrong. Let me get the right eraser out. We need to erase stuff. Bum, bum, bum. 
there that's where the actual first mistake was but of course it propagated so I'm gonna pretty much take out all this stuff down here so what is this all right x times x is not 2x rookie mistake all right, this is f prime of x. All right, so again, I'm making mistakes to show you, uh, first of all, how to catch them. Uh, make sure you're paying attention and trying to catch them yourself as I'm lecturing. And uh, also to show you that uh, you know everybody does make mistakes, although mine are always intentional. And we caught it right here graphically this time. So now I have the correct f prime of x. All right, f prime of one is negative one. That looks pretty close to what the graph looks like. So I'm happy with that. f prime of two is one fourth. Uh, now, There we go, clean that up. Okay, so at two, according to the, oh, negative one fourth, that would be a pretty obvious mistake if you get a negative sign wrong. Here's positive one fourth slope. That's definitely nowhere close to what we need. All right, negative one fourth slope. Y intercept. Ooh. So if I go left two, I'll go up a half. So I'm pretty sure it'll be right up there. Two up a half, yeah. Now, do my best to. Oh, come on. So, our equation, hopefully, that'll be right certainly seems pretty close to being right, according to this graph that I just sketched out hastily. All right, so there is derivatives, graphs, tangents, lines, curves. Now, just like you had left-right limits, you can have left-right derivatives. So I'm gonna write down those two right now. So left derivative of f of x at x equals, no, well, I'll just say at x. There isn't a really good symbol for it, so I'm just gonna leave the uh, written notation out. Left derivative of at x is, uh, there may be some notation for it. I haven't run across it. All right, so this is limit h approaches zero. We gotta be careful here. Here's x, I want a left derivative. So h is gonna approach zero from the negative side. So I want x plus h to be less than x, which means h needs to be negative or less than zero. There's left derivative and right derivative. And of course this is positive side. There's x, I wanna approach on this side. So I need h to be small, positive quantity. So I'm not putting these in a box. You don't need to memorize them. Um, I could put them together if I know both of them exist. 
So if left and right derivatives exist, at x and are equal, meaning they agree, then the derivative exists. Of course, at x. Just like your left right limits uh, are equal and they agree, that means your actual limit is that value. Uh, same thing works with derivatives. If left and right derivative exist, and are equal, then your derivative exists. So we'll do two examples. Example find, write, We're going to do the squared function again, and we're going to look for a right derivative at x equals 0. So I'm just copying and pasting from above. squared x hopefully somewhere dun, dun, dun. where did I do all that work right there oh Ooh, we gotta be careful I'm gonna use this right here All right, the problem is we cannot uh, plug in x equals zero because so uh, prime zero equals undefined. So we're gonna do, we could, there's two ways to address this. Uh, the way I'm gonna do it, and we wanna go a right derivative so here's zero, we want to go from the right side. So an extra pressure on the right. All right, so we want zero from the positive side. So this is one over zero. But the question is, positive infinity or negative infinity? X was approaching zero from the positive side right here, which means uh, square root of zero is a uh, square root of a small positive number, which is a small positive number. So one over zero is gonna be positive infinity in this case. Uh, I could have done it with the uh, definition of derivative by plugging in a zero in for x. So I could have plugged in x equals zero at the very start and had lim h approaches zero from the positive side, square root zero plus h. 
minus square root zero divided by h. So why is this okay to do? The question is, am I dividing by zero? Uh, the answer is no, I'm dividing by h. There are zeros, but they're in the numerator. So lim h approaches zero plus, let's see, square root h over h. All right, how does this cancel? Well, h is square root h squared. I can do this because h is positive, so I'm not taking any square roots of negative stuff. Now, still just using algebra. And we have one over square root h, which is one over square root zero, but everything here is positive, so it's one over small positive quantity, which is positive infinity. And we use the definition of the right derivative here. So we better get the same thing either way. Uh, all right, last things last. Uh, absolute value, we're about to do an absolute value problem. Actually, I'll talk about that tomorrow. Uh, how? to treat an absolute value. All right, the short answer is very carefully, and I will show you that.